Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. So, as I'm sure you must have noticed, or like not noticed, which is in fact a good thing, the dynamic duo out in Montecito has been uncharacteristically quiet lately. Surprise, surprise. However, it doesn't mean they're not up to something, because let's face it, they're always up to something. So, when we come back, we are going to take a look at what is out there, the stuff that is not being said or kind of being said. So, in a minute... So let's start with the non-news. When Nutmeg and Ginger are quiet for any length of time, the media, which has become uh, basically dependent on them for entertainment stories, starts digging into the past and resurfacing old stories, or they start making up stories. Um, now, keep in mind, I say this is the media making up stories. Because we know that Nutmeg and Ginger have a public relations team that is charged with keeping their names in the press, even when they have the decency to stay home and keep their mouths shut for a little bit, doesn't mean their press agents are not working on their behalf. So... Let's take a look at some of the stories that have recently cropped up. Apparently, Nutmeg saw Patrick J. Adams naked. I know. I, of all the bizarre things to be considered newsworthy, first of all, it apparently happened a long time ago when they were still working together on suits, and I guess um, Adams had a role in a play in which he was naked, and this is, I, I, personally, I don't know what to say about this. You take me to a play, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is naked, and you're going to have my attention. Patrick J. Adams? No. No. Um, I have no idea why this is suddenly surfacing many years later. My only explanation is because Nutmeg has been staying home lately, they just don't have anything else to report about. Um, another one, and this is bizarrely interesting. The dress from the Oprah interview has been declared by somebody or other, who knows who. It's not Mr. Blackwell's famous 10 best dress list. It's, but anybody can uh, can create an award. I can create an award right now, give it to my next door neighbor, publicize it, and she got an award. So I suspect that's sort of along the lines of what's going on. The Oprah interview dress has apparently been declared to be the dress of the year, and it is being donated to a museum in Bath. Bath, remember that? That's the city made famous by Jane Austen, a woman who made her career by touting appropriate manners and customs for you know, uh, the gentility. How ironic is that? And as I started reading through the article, I realized it's not even the real dress. It seems to be a replica of the dress. Okay, so again, we've got something that I can only declare to be non-news, but amazingly bizarre, especially because the dress is not being displayed in a museum in California, 
where I take it people actually thought highly of the interview. No, it's going to the UK, where people were up in arms because the British people in general were called racist. The royal family were called racist. Um, it, Kate made her cry. This was the interview in which they trashed the UK, trashed the Queen, trashed Kate, trashed virtually everybody who came within their reach got trashed. And this interview, which was so negative to the UK, uh, is now being memorialized by having the dress displayed in a bath museum. A bathroom I could get, but a bath museum? Good heavens. I don't know what to say about that. I suspect that if I were a British citizen and a resident of Bath, first thing I would do would be start writing letters saying, how dare you? But that's me. I guess the people of Bath like this sort of thing. I don't know. I, I don't know anyone from Bath. As I say, my association with Bath is Jane Austen and, and of course, Chaucer, but I'm flabbergasted by that one. So I'm just going to set that aside as bizarre, semi-fabricated news, because it's certainly not newsworthy. It's no more newsworthy than the fact that Nutmeg saw Patrick J. Adams naked on a stage once. Whoa. Another interesting bit of sort of non-news that came out was that the hosepipe ban in California, and that is a water conservation measure that limits people's ability to water their yard uh, in times of drought. And this is reasonable. California goes through serious periods of drought. And People in California, in particular the very wealthy, are using water to maintain lawns and other non-necessary uses. You know, it's like, let's keep our swimming pools filled. Let's keep our rose bushes watered. It's hard to justify that when other communities in California won't have drinking water. But hey, I don't live in California. I don't make their rules but they have imposed a hosepipe ban. And that means large, highly manicured estates like Nutmeg and Ginger's, uh, which, by the way, we got some figures on the maintenance costs on that. Maintenance costs are estimated at 15,000 pounds a month. That's approximately $22,000 a month. Keep in mind, if you extrapolate that annually, you are looking at about four times the average American household income is being used to keep their rose bushes watered. Okay. Now, there is a move uh, in California and the Southwest. It's much more popular in the Southwest to do the landscaping. I, yeah, did you notice the cat's here? Yes, his tail made an appearance. It's called xeriscaping, and it uses indigenous plantings so that they're not taxing on the water supply. Uh, places will have yards that are rocked in or uh, Japanese landscaping with, with images uh, raked into the sand. They'll design their landscapes with cactuses and other succulents. Very good. Very good idea. You know, you should always maintain a yard that's appropriate to your surroundings. That way you're not just using precious resources for your own vanity. But the article that I found this information in was saying this could scupper their chances for selling their mega mansion. Again, bizarre that anyone would consider that to be newsworthy, but still, 
My takeaway, of course, is the extravagance of spending four times the American household's average income on maintaining the rose bushes and then telling the rest of us that we need to be eco friendly. Hello. You know, hypocrisy, anyone? All right. Other stuff that has come out, and I have to pull back and give you a little bit of a backstory on this because this is speculative. Now, a lot of you have been saying over the past several months in the comments that Nutmeg and Ginger, uh, their actions are by design. This is not just the activity of two spoiled, self-indulgent people who just want everybody to love them and to hack with you if you have a contrary opinion, that there's a design, there's a method to the madness. Now, I have been reluctant to believe anything of the sort, in part because when you look at somebody like Harry, I don't even think there's a method to the madness when he gets up in the morning and goes to the bathroom. And this guy probably doesn't have the intellectual wherewithal to plan out his breakfast, never mind engage in some long-term scheme. Nutmeg? Oh, she does. Definitely, this woman can plan. Uh, and look where she is today as opposed to where she was five years ago. That should tell anybody she can plan. A lot of you have been saying, no, 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 there's, there's method to this. They're going somewhere with this. Well, the last time you folks came up with something that I thought was crazy and absolute proof that you all needed to polish your tinfoil hats or take your meds was when you said they were using dolls instead of their baby. And remember that? I made a video because I was going to prove how wrong you were. And instead, I ended up eating my words, which, by the way, with enough ketchup and mayonnaise, were very tasty. I'm starting to believe it now. So, how do we get here? Well, I've started looking at some stories that have been dropped recently and they all seem to be moving in a certain direction. Having said that, this is speculative. And I've always told you when I throw my opinions out, I'm gonna let you know. But what I'm doing is I'm piecing things together. It's not always a smart thing to do, but I'm gonna take you along with me for the ride. Started looking at articles, for example, Harry has renewed his lease on Frogmore. Now, nothing there, right? Except that he has to maintain a UK residence or at least a desire to reside in the UK, which clearly he's not, he's in California. So he has to maintain the residence in order to remain a counselor of state. Now, I don't know why Harry wants to be a counselor of state in the first place. I have no idea why the queen would want him as a counselor of state. My cat's available for the job and he'd probably be a lot better at it. He's definitely a lot brighter than Harry. So yeah, okay, there's point one. Picture comes out. This picture was taken in the New York trip. And uh, the picture is described as Megan looking regal and hinting at a powerful future. So what does that mean? Hinting at a powerful future looking regal? Well, regal is not a thing here in the U.S. People are saying all the time, she's looking for a political career. Well, we don't describe that as regal. It, 
it's actually really grating to a big piece of the American population if you start using terms like regal to describe our politics. Goes against our grain. Doesn't go against the grain of the folks in the UK. So that's factor two. Um, we have a number of articles that have come out. By the way, all the articles that I've been reading that have started to form this picture, they're all cited in the video notes. Articles suggesting that Eugenie and Jack Broadbank, whatever his name is, Brookbank, Brookbank. I don't know who they are. They're not my royal family. Eugenie and Jack, let's just put it that way, are off in California and they're having dinner with Nutmeg and Ginger and Eugenie went off to a football game, which is in fact what we call it. And it's coming out in the press suggesting that Nutmeg and Ginger are not on the outs, that they are well within the bosom of the royal family, that the royal family wants them back, and they are courting that opening. Point three. Then we have the polls. As of January 1st this year, no, I'm sorry, January 4th, my apologies, Harry's net approval, I gotta say this with a straight face, in the UK rose to zero. Yep, he had been in negative numbers for a long time, and now his UK approval rating is at zero. Somebody needs to throw that man a party. Wow, how did that happen? Meanwhile, Nutmeg's net approval rating has risen to negative 17. Again, party time. Wow. Meanwhile, and I've got a couple of articles from December, their ratings are going down in the U.S. So that's point four. Now I'm starting to wonder if the people who were saying that the whole debacle that is nutmeg and ginger in California and Megxit and all of this was some sort of plan to harm the royal family in order to raise their own status in relation to the royals. I'm not quite seeing that. But what I am seeing is some effort to improve their public perception in the UK with an eye to getting back into the fold. So, what does that mean? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not 100% sure where it's leading. What I am seeing is little droplets indicating that they want to go back to the UK. Apparently, the US is not working out as well as they planned, and they're looking to go back home. And that's certainly what I'm seeing. Now, the idea of giving the impression to the American public that they are secure within the fold of the royal family does have benefits in the U.S. Everything they are in the U.S. is based on the fact that they have that strong connection to the royal family. If they are perceived as shunted aside, outsiders, on the outs, no longer welcome, uh, no longer in the Queen's good books, that lowers their status in the U.S. Could that be part of it? Maybe. Why not? Harry renewing the lease to Frogmore 
and then Eugenie and Jack coming out. Who knows if that's a trade-off? After all, Eugenie and Jack live at Frogmore, and if Harry renews the lease so that they can continue to live there, maybe they owe him a favor, and hauling out some random royals to show that they still have clout in the UK is something they might find valuable to enhance their status in the US, which, as I say, has been declared to be failing. But that it's just not quite as on point as all of this information forming together to suggest that they are looking at mending fences and going back home. So, for my part, as an American, yay! For those of you in the UK, gosh, I'm sorry. You know, really, gosh, I'm sorry. I don't even know what to say. You've got to wonder why, why that would even appeal to them if they truly believed that the UK was an awful racist place that, you know, chased them out with white sheets and pitchforks. And that's certainly what they made it sound like, as if the Klan were ready to burn a cross on their lawn when they were at Frogmore. And I know there are people who believe that. I, I heard that nonsense parroted back time and time again from, well, people that I, I haven't really thought of as extremely stupid or extremely crazy. Not that I'm saying, you know, that the faculty at MIT is saying this, but people, people who have a degree of credibility have been saying, oh yes, she was forced out. They're all racist. They just chased her away. They hate her because she's black. You know, it was a black woman in the royal family. It's like, no, no, let's start off with, she's not black. She is a person of mixed race, but she is not a black woman. Uh, okay, I'm as blind as a bat, but even I can figure that one out. I'm not sure what we're seeing, but the people who are saying that this was all a plot so that they could go back to the UK with a stronger power base are starting to look less tinfoil hatty to me at this point. So, considering how foolish it was for me to dismiss the whole Archie doll nonsense, I just wanted to share with you that I'm not dismissing this one. I am starting to actively watch for these indications. Is this what they're doing? As I say, Harry can't plan a trip to the toilet, but Nutmeg can certainly plan. She can plan, she can scheme, and we've already seen she can pull it off. This is a woman who is nothing if not determined. Is this her plan? Could be. On the other hand, is it a fallback plan? The original plan to marry into the UK, gain a whole bunch of status, come to the US, and then exploit that status and use it as a springboard to even greater status in the US, you know, becoming a super movie star or becoming the governor of California or whatever, and that plan didn't materialize. And now, returning to the UK is sort of a fallback, like a plan B. It's a possibility, too. I am going to continue to watch for this. And I strongly suggest you do the same. We will watch together. Because so far, I'm seeing an interesting picture emerge. I'm just not quite sure what it is. All right. I only have one more thing for you, and this is a fun thing. Christopher Boozy finally sent me 
the cease and desist letter he's been promising for weeks. I don't follow social media. I'm not on social media. I've, I've mentioned this before. No, no interest. But many of our viewers who are have sent me copies of his tweets saying that, you know, we're going to get a cease and desist letter. I did. I, I haven't responded. I'm not going to. I'm not really concerned about it. Um, all I can say to Mr. Boozy and his lawyers is, you know what the name of this channel is? Hey, go for it. I, I do not make stuff up on this channel. If I say something, it's because I have good reason to believe it is accurate and I list my sources. And when it comes to defamation of character, the truth is an absolute defense. So, what can I say? All right, we are going to take a look at a little slideshow on our way out just to make us feel a little better about moving into the rest of our day. I will see you all over the weekend for the thrifting videos and again Sunday night. And if not Meg and Ginger are still quiet come Sunday night, I am going to have a chance to take a look at something I have wanted to take a look at for some time. And let's just hope because it's been on the back burner because they always kick some new dirt up. But we'll see. We're going to hope for Sunday. All right. Have a terrific day, everyone, and I will see you next time.